and so merit to share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Uh, reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has given me a well-trained tongue, that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard, my face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
according to Matthew. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that time on, he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says, My appointed time comes near. In your house I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered, and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at the table with the twelve, and that while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him one after the other, Surely it is not I, Lord. He said in reply, he who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes, as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread said the blessing, broke it, and giving it to his disciples, said, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it all of you, for this is the blood of the covenant, which will be shed on behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, from now on I shall not drink this fruit of the vine, until the day when I drink it with you new in the kingdom of of my father. Then after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Jesus said to them, This night all of you will have your faith in me shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him in reply, Though all may have their faith in you shaken, mine will never be. Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples spoke likewise. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to feel sorrow and distress. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and keep watch with me. He advanced a little and fell prostrate in prayer, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, and not as I will but as you will. When he returned to his disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, So you could not keep watch with me for one an hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. When drawing a second time, he prayed again. My father, if it is not possible that this cup pass without my drinking it, your will be done. Then he returned once more, and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open. He left them and withdrew them, and prayed a third time, saying the same thing again. Then he returned to his disciples, and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at hand, when the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go, look. My betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests and the elders of the people. 
His betrayer had arranged a sign with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him. Immediately he went over to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi. And he kissed him. Jesus answered him, Friend, do what you have come for. Then stepping forward, they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. And behold, one of those who accompanied Jesus put his hand to his sword, drew it, and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its sheath, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot call upon my Father, and he will not provide me at this moment with more than twelve legions of angels? But then how will the scriptures be fulfilled which say that it must come to pass in this way? At that hour Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I sat teaching in the temple area, Yet you did not arrest me. But all this has come to pass, that the writings of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Those who arrested Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the high priest's courtyard. And going inside, he sat down with the servants to see the outcome. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Though many false witnesses came forward, finally two came forward and who stated, This man said, I can destroy the temple of God and within three days rebuild it. The high priest rose and addressed him. Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I order you to tell us under oath before the living God whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him in reply, You have said so. But I tell you from now on, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has blasphemed. What further need have we of witnesses? You have now heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? They said in reply, He deserves to die. Then they span his face and struck him, while some slapped him, saying, Prophesy us, Christ. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard, one of the maids came over to him and said, You, you were, too were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it in front of everyone, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. As he went out to the gate, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, This, this man was with Jesus, Jesus the Nazarene. Again he denied it with an oath, I do not know the man. A little later, the bystanders came over and said to Peter, Surely you too are one of them, even your speech gives you away. At that he began to curse and to swear, I do not know the man. And immediately a cock crowed. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had spoken, Before the cock crows you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. When it was morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that Jesus had been condemned, deeply regretted what he had done. He returned the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? Look to it yourself. Flinging the money into the temple, he departed and went off and hanged himself. The chief priest gathered up the money, but said, It is not lawful to deposit this in the temple treasury, for it is Christ's blood. After consultation, they used it to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners.
That is why that field, even today, is called the field of blood. That then was fulfilled what had been said to Jeremiah the prophet. And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the value of a man with a price on his head, a price set by some of the Israelites, and they paid it out for the potter's field, just as the Lord had commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, Pontius Pilate, and he questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. And when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But he did not answer him one word, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, the, the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished. And at that time, they had a notorious prisoner came to, called Barabbas. So when they had assembled, Pilate said to them, Which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas, or Jesus, called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had handed him over. While he was still seated on the bench, his wife sent him a message. Have nothing to do with that righteous man. I suffered much in a dream today because of him. The chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas, but to destroy Jesus. The governor said to them in reply, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? They answered, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus, called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. But he said, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted aloud, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but that a riot was breaking out instead, he took water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Look to it yourselves. And the whole people said in reply, His blood is upon us and upon our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. But after he had Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak about him. Weaving a crown out of thorns, they placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, Hail King, King of the Jews! They spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon. This man they pressed into service to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he had tasted it, he refused to drink. After they had crucified him, they divided his garments by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And they placed over his head the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself, if you are the Son of God, and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests, with the scribes and elders, mocked him and said, He saved others, but he cannot save himself. So he is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver now. For he said, I am the Son of God. The revolutionaries who were crucified with him also kept abusing him in the same way. From noon onward, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, which means, My God, 
My God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, This one is calling for Elijah. Immediately one of them ran to get a sponge. He soaked it in wine and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, Wait, let, let us see if Elijah, Elijah comes to save him. him. But Jesus cried out again in a loud voice and gave up his spirit. And behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, rocks were split, tombs were opened, and the body of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and the men with whom who were keeping watch over Jesus feared greatly when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening. And they said, Truly, this was the Son of God. There were many women there, looking on from a distance, who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph who was himself a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be handed over. Taking the body, Joseph wrapped it in clean linen and laid it in his new tomb that he had hewn in the rock. Then he rolled a huge stone across the entrance to the tomb and departed. But Mary Magdalene and the other Mary remained sitting there facing the tomb. The next day, the one following the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember that this imposter, while still alive, said, After three days I will be raised up. Give orders, then, that the greater is be served in the middle of their day. Let the disciples come and steal him and say to the people, He has been raised from the dead. This last imposture would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, The guard is yours. Go, secure it as best you can. So they went and secured the tomb by fixing a seal to the stone and setting the guard. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This is, of course, a very different celebration from our normal uh, Palm Sunday Passion Sunday uh, Mass. We, of course, have the, uh, uh, normally, the pe young people from our youth group are acting out the Passion Gospel. It's a very moving uh, uh, portrayal of the Gospel for each uh, uh, Palm Sunday as it comes up in the calendar. But of course, this year, because of our uh, 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 coronavirus shutdown, we are unable to do that. However, I will note that uh, the uh, Passion Service from a past year is up on our YouTube channel and it actually features our cameraman, Sean Merrill. So you'll get to see the man behind the camera if you uh, watch that. So check it out on our YouTube channel. Uh, the greeting of Jesus, of course, begins very well. His entry into Jerusalem. He's greeted by people with palms and branches. Uh, matter of fact, in some languages, like Spanish, this is not called Palm Sunday, it's called Branch Sunday. And people use, uh, as well as palms, they use olive branches, because of course they grow olives in Spain. 
So, uh, and just like the people did in Jerusalem. And this waving of the branches, putting them down to greet Jesus in his path into the city seemed to herald great things. But the good times do not last. We can all identify with that. The good times do not last. We went from a booming economy with record low unemployment to the COVID-19 bust brought about by our confinement and a record rise in the rate of unemployment. However, we are all in this together. But Jesus, at the end of his good times, he took it solely on himself. He gave himself up to death and crucifixion. Jesus' death, of course, gives us his Father's mercy and forgiveness. He hoped in the, his prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane that there was some other way and prayed that the cup, the cross, what he's referring to, passing by. But ultimately he said to his Heavenly Father, not as I will, but as you will. So, let us all strive to have the same obedient will. These restrictions that we're going through right now are a way to save lives. Not as I will. But as you will, should be our response to the social uh, effort we're going through today to contain this terrible pandemic. But the cross of Jesus, of course, is ultimately not about the COVID-19 virus or a bust in our economy, but it applies to it. It's about Christ's death for us on the cross. He died so that we might have eternal life. Our challenge is to so live our lives as to imitate Jesus' sacrifice, laying down our lives for others. Prayer, repentance, works of charity, all things I know that we can do right now regardless of the shutdown. We all see it, of course, in many people at this time, most notably in the healthcare workers who are risking their lives every day to care for the sick. Can we lay down our lives in this COVID-19 time? If we do, his cross is connected to us. Jesus reaches out to us from the cross to make holy to join with us when we are in prayer, repentance, or good works, when we're laying down our lives for others. So today, on this Passion Sunday, this Palm Sunday, let's resolve to lay down our lives for others, and so be close, be next to, be there with Jesus in his suffering and death for sinners on the cross. One God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven. And I, the Holy Spirit, was incarnate to the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Having faith and hope in the promises of our Lord, we bring our prayers before our loving God and our forgiving Savior. In response to the Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, Bishop Lucia, our pastor, Father Hyde, and all leaders and members of the clergy throughout the world, that they continue to lead the flock with faith, love, and mercy. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For the doctors, nurses, and all in the health care field who are at the forefront of the battle against the coronavirus, that the Lord guide them in their efforts. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For all those experiencing any type of illness, that the Lord Jesus, the true physician of the world, bring them comfort, strength, and healing in their suffering. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For EMTs, firefighters, police officers, corrections officers, grocery store and retail employees, and all who put themselves at greater risk for our behalf, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For ourselves, that just as Jesus had helped from Simon to carry his cross, may the Lord Jesus help us to carry our crosses when our burdens overwhelm us. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the success of the St. Margaret's Capital Campaign to provide much needed repairs to our church structure, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died from the coronavirus, for those who have died from other causes, and for our beloved dead, those gone before us but who still live in our hearts and memories. We especially remember this weekend John Grevian, Francis Stable, and the people of St. Margaret's. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We now lay our own intentions in the silence of our hearts. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. As we begin this holy week, Father in heaven, we thank you for every good thing you provide, and for all the blessings you'll pour out upon your people through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you forever. Amen. And we will uh, now continue with our prayer for the St. Margaret's Capital Campaign and the Novena for the Coronavirus. Uh, and the Coronavirus. Prayer for St. Margaret's Capital Campaign. The Lord does not build a house. In vain do its builders labor. Lord, as we seek to maintain and repair this our house of worship, we ask you to bless our presence. Give us all hearts open to generous giving, both for our capital campaign and other works of charity. May our prayer, praise, and thankful hearts in this parish church make us all your willing servants. We thank you for this, our beautiful church, and we ask your blessings on all those living and dead who help build this church. May all the work be built up by your guidance and help. Amen. Sacred Heart of Jesus, have our hands. St. Margaret Mary, pray for us. And the Novena Prayer for an End to the Coronavirus Pandemic. O Mary, full of grace, patroness of this nation and mother of the Church, in this time of illness and worldwide need, we seek your intercession for the human family before your Son's throne of grace and mercy. We ask for strength and adversity, health and weakness, and comfort and sorrow. Help us, O Blessed Mother, to be filled with confidence and trust in the hand and compassion of our God. Let us not be afraid, like our own St. Mary and Pope, who entrusted her life and ministry among the outcasts of society into the care of our divine physician. Continue to watch over all who are sick, as well as those who care for them, and give wisdom to all who are seeking a cure. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to the second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Isidore, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Douglas our Bishop, our retired Bishop Robert, the other bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow all of them, all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give, my peace I give, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her Peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Peace.
Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call. Through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just a few announcements. Uh, one is that uh, um, uh, this uh, site being live cast on Facebook Live, this Mass will also uh, be put up on YouTube, on the uh, Paris YouTube channel, which can be found by searching for St. Margaret's Maddie Dale. So if you're live streaming this and you know of uh, people who would be interested in uh, seeing this Mass, parishioners or just friends, uh, you can tell them to search for it on our YouTube channel. Once again, that's St. Margaret's Maddie Dale. Also, we will be live streaming and recording uh, um, uh, many of our Easter services, for instance, the uh, daily Masses during Holy Week. Those times will be announced uh, in, uh, on our parish Facebook page. Once again, look for St. Margaret's Mattydale. Also, um, uh, Holy Thursday, uh, the Holy Thursday Mass will be uh, live cast on, uh, at 5 p.m. on this Thursday. The uh, Good Friday service at 3 p.m., and those will be recorded. Our uh, Easter Vigil will be live cast at 8 p.m. Saturday night. And our uh, Easter Sunday Mass will be live cast and recorded on Easter Sunday morning at 9 a.m. And so please join us. And once again, uh, uh, we are still neat collections, so if you can mail them in, drop them off through the slot, or uh, uh, donate via uh, the internet. There's links on the parish website, uh, and uh, also I believe on our Facebook page and on the uh, uh, YouTube channel. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God the Father of mercies who has given up you an example of love and the passion of his only begotten Son, grant that by serving God in your neighbor, you may hold, lay hold of the wondrous gift of his blessing. Amen. Amen. So that you may receive the reward of everlasting life for, from him, whose earthly death you believe that, through whose earthly death you believe that you escape eternal death. Amen. And by following the example of his self-abasement, may you possess a share in his resurrection. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Oh, and one more announcement. We had announced earlier we would be distributing palms, but... The bishop, after consulting with uh, the health authorities, decided that's not a good idea. We will preserve the palms, and hopefully when the shutdown is over, we can distribute them at that time. But we will not be distributing palms this weekend. We're saving them for a later time. I'm very sorry. Thank you.